Okay. All right, let's call to order the Board of Library Trustees for the Arlington Heights Memorial Library on this actually sad Tuesday, January 17, 2023, because the arcade age is over. No. <laughs> um, can we do a roll call, please? Trustee Gala? Here. Trustee Meadow? Here. Trustee Rule? Here. Trustee Samari? Here. Trustee Sutton? Here. Trustee Here. All right, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any public comments? See, no, we'll move on to liaison report. Friends. I uh, did not have a report from the friends, but I will tell you that they uh, met on January 3rd and they approved $89,000 for a AB system replacement for our hundred room. That system is uh, about 12 years old and um, uh, you know, we'd like to have that replaced. We brought that to the friends earlier. Um, they uh, thought about it for a while and at the last meeting they, they approved um, the base system at $89,000. You know, there are some upgrades that we'll bring back to them uh, once we go out to bid for it. Uh, for consideration. So thank you to the friends for the support. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, very good. All right. Thank you very much. Foundation. Or I understand I have to get out of the way because I'm gonna get blinded. Yep. <laughs> so are you trying to sign my turn or not? Okay. Yep. Usually somebody else drives. So this is you know, I, I was never good at patting my head and rubbing my stomach. That <laughs> so what we're going to run through real quick um, on uh, get my notes here. So the foundation and library co-hosted basically um, a meeting on the 9th of January with School District 214. And this was to promote the scholarship for the trades as well as the foundation and the maker place itself. A lot of them hadn't been there. And we initially had a confirmed number of 21. We ended up with 47. Oh, wow. We had 21 teachers. We had nine counselors, five associate principals, five CTE division heads, three district administrators, three district assistants, and one principal. Um, This was, we provided some snacks. They were all really excited about the space. A lot of them felt very comfortable, obviously, in the, uh, in, not necessarily in front of the food, but in the fabrication area. They were very uh, impressed with that, um, as well as the whole facility. They were just... A lot of them uh, had some preconditioned ideas about what they were gonna see when they walked in there. One gentleman walked up to me and said, I thought we were gonna walk in and see a couple of 3D printers and an art area. So I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's Dr. Lopez who made um, the case for the number of students that do come back, don't finish um, a four-year education, even though they thought they were, and they come back to the area and they're kind of footloose, you know, they're not sure what to do. Um, I made a pitch about, certainly to the counselors and the instructors, you know who these young people are. And we had flyers and posters on the table uh, and all of them were gone. So, and I did have a couple of people walk up to me and said, I know who I'm giving this to tomorrow. So that, and I will tell you that we found out today, I heard from our scholarship chair, we have our first application already in. Yay. Which we assumed we wouldn't get it until closer to the deadline, which is in March. Mike talked about the history of the building, how it came to be the maker place, um, what some of the goals were for creating that space. And again, people were just blown away. Mike, you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, I think I just talked, you know, like, like Larry said about the history, why we did it, how, um, what was brought to the community, how the village thought that this was the best use of the building and, um, and what we can provide to students and uh, you know, people that they may appreciate it. People also ask what the use is, and it was nice that we could share with them how it's being used, how the space is being used. Um, 
clearly uh, lots of registrations over the holidays for making Christmas gifts and um, just, you know, the, the fact that the classes are going and, and again, they were, um, some of them were there during the 214 culinary and hadn't really realized all of the, the background because there was no physical there that day. So again, some folks huddling in the kitchen. So we had, I mean, it was a really good crowd. They didn't bolt out of there. It wasn't institute day for them. And um, they hung around for a while. A lot of them did self-guided tours. Um, they went through the building on their own. Mike offered to take some folks on tours. I'm not sure that many people did it. I know they talked to you, but. Yeah, they were kind of clustered in groups and checking out the rooms individually. So we just kind of bounced around and answered questions. And uh, we had a lot of interest in the, in the space. Yeah, definitely. I think that's it. Um, so, so we consider that to be really a successful event. Um, we have our first batch fundraiser on January 27th. We sold out in five days at $75. Um, and I'm working with Brian to make sure that all the details are together. I can't have an email back at work today. Um, so we've created a registration system on our own website. It's going to be the Cheddar Up, which we did last time. There's a small fee associated with that, but certainly not the same amount that Cheddar Up takes. So, and I feel like we have better control with the reservation system on our, our site. It also does a countdown and lets you know if it's full. And we are, after this one, I have a meeting scheduled with the development committee to determine how we evaluate this, what we did right, what we did wrong, how we can improve it. And then we've got ideas for other fundraisers through 2023. But we're going to evaluate this one first. Like everything we do since for the last four years, we crawl and then we walk and then we run. So everything we've done, it's always new. So, so far, we're doing okay. Right, John? Yeah, I think it's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, we, uh, we also ordered the baby garden last week for um, the Kids World update. We don't know when that's coming in, but it has been ordered. Um, I'm sorry, the baby garden? The baby garden? Yeah. It's basically a large space that is well, um, is that where you grow the babies? It's where you grow the babies. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it would be for kids' world. It's kind of a large space that um, you know parents can let their babies roam around in the baby padded. garden. And it, yeah, it's padded. It's padded. Yeah. Yes, a very large <laughs> place. Like very large place. You know, large place. Yes. So, it's a really expensive place. <laughs> In fact, this was the first item that I presented to the board. Mike always sends a request. I presented to the board, and they said, Heather, is this going to bed? I mean, what is this? I mean, so, you know, Mike and I talked through it, and I assured the board that this was, you know, the best deal. Uh, but, you know, for wear and tear, <coughs> you've got to use product that will last. And I think that sometimes I don't think about that, how much use things get here for my board. So, uh, but it's on order. Um, and we have two new board members. Um, we lost two, we gained two. They're just starting, and we were notified yesterday that we received again the 2023 Gold Seal Transparency and Guide Star. So we've updated Ooh, nice. that on our website. Well done. We keep working. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Um, any questions I can answer for you? Yeah, I was just going to say that I, some of the people that I follow on social media, teachers, counselors, whatever. Um, we're really impressed because they've talked about it on social media. So that's great because I think that just enhances the reach. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's good to hear. Good. Yeah, it was all positive. Mm -hmm. So thanks. Chris has got an applicant already. Mm -hmm. Well, internal question. Is the um, is it only for high school students? The uh, grant? Yeah, it's age 17 through 25. Okay, that's what I couldn't remember. Thank you. Yeah. And we have all of that information on our website. I um, actually we didn't have a we didn't have an advisory team meeting in the fall because we had the fundraiser instead. So I've reached out to all of my advisory team members. And I'm getting sitting down with them this month uh, to make sure that we want to continue. But they've asked some of those questions too, and I've referred everybody to the website. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right, let's move on to action item one, approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of December 20th, 2022. Do you have a motion? So moved. 
Second. Second. Any comments, questions? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. It passes. Let's move on to item two, review of the financial report for the period ended December 31st, 2022. Okay. Uh, real estate revenue totaled $3,398,952.27 in the month of December. So this represents the second installment of property taxes starting to come in after uh, Cook County bills were delayed about five months. Uh, the library received personal property replacement taxes in the amount of $25,074.25 this month. We also received $10,394.72 in uh, of cash in lieu of land uh, from the village in December. Our copy or printer revenue totaled $2,900.10. Um, collection fees for late items was $100. Meeting room fees were $200. Lost item charges totaled $893.35. Uh, there was no uh, interest income reported this month. The Friends of the Library reimbursed us $236.97. Maker's Place, Maker Space miscellaneous revenue was $971.28. And our total revenue collected in December was $3,441,248.93. On the expense side, 100% uh, of the fiscal year has lapsed and we have expensed 88% of our total operating budget. Our favorable variance to date is $1,500,745, and 65% of the total annual capital budget has been expensed as of December. A couple of questions generally related to uh, financials that I'm, I'll um, address now. Uh, there was a question about the real estate balance, um, and the question um, is that due to the county state being late, and yes, it was. Um, how does this impact cash flow? Uh, with our fund balance, um, you know, our policy has our fund balance, keeps our operating fund balance between 33 and 75% exactly for this reason. So um, when those taxes come in late, we pull out of the fund balance. Um, I think we're about $3 million below where we were last year at this point um, in our fund balance um, due to that. So, but we're still in a very healthy position in our, uh, in our fund. So we can yeah. make sure I understand this. So, okay, looking at your, at your dashboard here and also putting this together. So the total revenues were 12.2. We've got on here taxes, um, 11, nine, and it was estimated 14, eight. So with it all coming in late, we're still there, there's still money that's going to be coming in, correct? So from the second from the second bill. Okay, so that means because as I look at this, yes, it's great that we're in the budget by 1.5, but as we look at this at the end of the year, our total revenues are 12.2. But our total our total expenditures were fourteen nine, so we're about twenty two point seven under. Correct. Okay. Yes. You didn't follow all your math just then, but yes, I think you're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't always follow all the math, so, <laughs> so, so don't, don't ask questions. But that will become rectified that gap as we get in the additional as we get in the additional tax revenue. Now, yeah, will that revenue be? Um, Put in 22 or 23. So it's a question for the auditors. We did let the auditors, you know, know that that was a concern about the timing of that revenue. So whether they want us to book some sort of, you know, period 13 entry during the audit as far as like a receivable for that amount of money. That's a discussion for them. So it's every library in the county that's dealing with the same sort yeah. of delay. So they're well aware. So if it so if it did get have to be counted in 23, what would happen is the numbers would be somewhat similar to what we're seeing here. But in 23, at the end of the year, we would see a large amount of revenue as opposed, as opposed to what we would yeah. be getting. I think what the auditors will advise is that we book a you know, real, real estate tax revenue receivable in 2022. We obviously haven't booked that entry yet. We haven't gone through the audit yet. So it's not reflected in today's numbers. We this dashboard as of today's meeting date. So that would bring up our, you know, what we, it's like a, it's like a receivable on our books for accounting purposes. And then we would receive that money, which we see we're starting to in um, grading even more in January, um, that would reduce our receivable rather than just like accounting geography. But I think that's what the auditors will recommend. We just started preliminary field work on the audit. So there's still another month to go on. Okay, very cool, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then there was a question about the Friends of the Library and when they're going to pay their balance uh, due of um, $26,601. Um, their actual amount due was $16,732. So I don't know 
where the discrepancy came from, but um, they had a, a new treasurer come in. They had to get new checks. Um, there were some um, issues of getting the funds to us, but they have uh, dropped off the checks to us on January 6th and they're you now um, up to date. Uh, fund 491 capital projects was significantly underspent in 2022. Is that roll over to 2023? So what happens with that money is that we'll go back into our capital fund balance and then whatever we budget for uh, in 2023 will then get pulled out of there. So essentially it doesn't, um, it doesn't really roll over, but it goes back into that fund and then we can reallocate uh, in the budget for 2023. That was, those are all the questions I had. Um, for the can I ask a question? Yep. Gosh, 38, almost $38,500 per copier. That seems like a lot. Is that, is that typical? I mean, it's higher than we budgeted. I, where, where are you saying that? Right. Mm -hmm. On the first page, 44, 36, 74. Yeah. Oh. Right, I know it's revenue, but doesn't that seem like a lot for, I mean, did yeah. was this an unusual year in terms of people I don't think so. I mean, no. I think that's pretty. I mean, twenty five thousand. That's pretty typical for two thousand dollars a month. Yes. Um, so I mean, it's a nice line item, I guess. It's like a part time person. <laughs> now, would you pay? You know, obviously for all the consumables and the maintenance and all that stuff that that would come out. Toner, right. well. yeah, toner, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Paper, ink, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, now we're losing money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any more questions on that? Okay, let's move on to action item three, review the check register for the period ended December 31st, 2022. Okay, before I get into the check register, I'm going to invite Tracy to talk a little bit about the new check register that we see yeah. um, so we can follow along yeah. and um, you know, maybe a little bit uh, transition. Sure. Yeah, sure. I'm sure you're all familiar with the MUNIS uh, ERP that has been, we've been working with the village to implement since even before I started with the library. So the financials module of the new ERP actually went live last week on Monday. So it's very exciting, very long time coming. Um, so all last week, really, we were um, working really closely, even more closely with the village and the consultants. Um, really, have, that's been ramping up since fourth quarter of last year. But if I could actually stop for a second, because I know Jen's new here, um, and just to kind of what what happened because the village put in a whole new ERP system, and we What's are an tied. Enterprise risk plan. Is that what it is? Okay. Controls all the functions essentially, and we're part of it. Part of that financially, so we paid a certain amount in to, to do this. So when they re redid it, we had to redo our whole system at the same exact same time too. They say basically. Yeah, absolutely. And there's different modules or sections of that software that are getting rolled out in phases. So this is the financials module. So it's like our general letter, like our accounting software. There's an HR module that will be coming later on that will include like payroll and things. But the ERP, all these different modules will talk to each other and interface together more seamlessly. Um, and they're very common in large businesses. And our old ledger was very, very, very outdated. And so we're very excited to have it. Um, so this warrant in front of you, this January meeting um, is our transitional month. It was kind of because it's a conversion month, half of the process was performed in our old system and I would say half in the new system. And what I mean by that is we entered all of our regular invoices in our old system and then we performed this export of that and then an import into the new system and that checks on that register in front of you were actually cut out of the new system. So that's kind of what I mean by half in the old, half in the new. Um, but um, yeah, it was a lot of troubleshooting last week, which we expect, um, been through a ledger conversion before. It's not unusual, but the village science was great. The consultants were great. Everyone was very accessible. And um, so we worked through that. And what we were paying this more is consistent with past January meetings that you would be approving um a check a list of checks for both december which is normal so regular december and then in the past you would have had a second check register for january invoices that would be part of period one the january ones that you know about at this point in time anyway those are all just commingled now in a single check register the only difference um is that 
anything relating to 2023 or beyond are just coded as appreciated expense on that register. Pages of your register, you'll see more things in department zero than you typically would see at this time of year. And all that means is that when we get into the new system in January, everything in 2023 will be in the new system, and everything in 2022 is in the old system. That's why we did it that way. So we'll just use some journal entries to get those into their correct expense account in period one of um, 2023. But that's that's only difference. Instead of two different check registers, you have one. But more prepaid than you would have last year. It's just because this is a transitional model. So the check register itself, on the surface, it looks different, maybe a little flashier, but really all the columns are pretty much exactly the same as what you're used to reviewing. So it goes by department, and then within department, it's alphabetical, I believe, by vendor name. And then the, um, the amount column is really the one that you want to focus on. Those are the line by line detailed amounts. The final column that's highlighted in gray, that total, I think it's called total amount or something. Check amount. Or check amount. So that is the actual grand total for the whole check register that's going to that vendor. So it's just like sort of a reference number. And if you see Amazon, you can look at the description of that charge. Maybe it's like a $30 charge to Amazon. And then you might see a big $15,000 number in gray next to it. That just means the sum of all the Amazons on the check register are going to equal that check amount that's going to that vendor. So um, I think for your purposes in reviewing, you would pay more attention to just the amount column. Still interesting to see you know, how much is coming to it. Sort of like I was looking yeah. at page five, you're $157.99 for the check, but you're giving $16,000 to the state. Exactly. So somewhere within those other pages are the other charges that are making up that total. It is worth pointing out that some vendors are receiving more than one check. So you might see Amazon in a gray amount and then Amazon in a different gray amount. And that's a function of just the setting in the new software where we're gonna work with the vendor to see if we can further condense because typically you just see Amazon one check. But this month, because of the new system, they're getting a number of checks and they all add up to you know the total amount of all the detail lines, but we're hoping to just make future ones to that even further. But it's worth pointing out, I think. Tracy, when we see the vendor name listed as Arlington Heights Memorial Library, um, and some of it's AV material, some of it's books, some of it's processing. Yes. Why do, are those the ones that are transported from the other system? Or? No, so those represent reimbursement of, to ourselves for credit card charges. Oh, so okay. they are both MasterCard and Express charges as well as petty cash reimbursements to staff. Got it. Um, so you'll see a number of those. Okay. We kind of just list ourselves as a vendor and just reimbursement. And at the end, behind your check register, we always include a schedule of all the annex charges and all the MasterCard charges and all the petty cash reimbursements so that you want to see those. Right. So if we could match them up. The $17 here represents the $17 on someone's. Got it. Thank you. Okay, quick, so, I'm sorry, quick question. What is Midwest tape? They're a um, supplier of our AV materials. So CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays. Uh, because I'm literally thinking like scotch tape, and I'm like, that is a <laughs> lot of money <laughs> for scotch tape. Or duct tape. All the tapes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, okay. so I have a number of checks to go through here. Any questions before about the check register, reading the check register, or anything else before I start going through some checks? Much easier to read. Right? Yeah. Yes. 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 That similar to the reformatting of the check register, next month you'll see the similar reformatting of that revenue and expenditure report too. It'll look more like this. It's hard to read, right? Yeah. Um, because now that'll all be directly in the new system for January, which is what you'll be reviewing in February meeting. So that will, again, It'll have all the same information and largely the same columns, but you might notice when you get your packet similar to check register. Maybe it won't mean that cheaters at that point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? All right. Uh, so on page, there were a couple different pages and a couple different checks. Uh, page two, four, and five um, to AJ Gallagher, Lira, or Risk Program Administrators. Um, the, each of these checks, well, one of the checks was $7,200, another check was $103,001.62. Uh, 
another check was $41,031. That's our insurance renewal premiums for the 2023 year. Um, so as a member of the Lira Cooperative, um, these are considered prepaid expenses now will be expensed to 2023 in the new uh, ledger in January. On page two, check uh, 100012 and 100014 at Amazon. Uh, the amounts of 69.97 and 34.99. Uh, they are HOGA kits for customers who registered for our winter HOGA with us challenge mm -hmm. online. Uh, HOGA, or HOGA, I'm sorry, is the Danish sense of comfort, togetherness, and well-being. These kits include warm fuzzy socks, an assortment of teas, succulents, and other special gifts to encourage coziness and a feeling of contentment while participating in the program. If also, I may. Yeah. So that gets back to the point you were making about the check amount, because I was reacting to the check amount, not the HOGA kits. And so all that's going to roll up with an Amazon. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, also on page two, check one. There, was there another question? Yeah, yeah. No, well, I, was gonna, I didn't call you ahead of time on this, but when you get to page three, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> Uh, then also on page two, check 100028 to the Arlington Heights Memorial Library. That is a American Express charge. Uh, it's a credit actually of 8469. That's our cashback credit for our uh, corporate credit card. Uh, on page three, um, Carol, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, this says Visito Piano Tuning. Is that for one tuning? That is for this piano and the piano in the garage. The piano in our Hendrickson room and the one downstairs. Waste of money downstairs. That's yeah, we only do it like once a year. Yeah, just yeah. To, that's, I wonder if that's high one, but two, it's not. But I don't think it's for use of money for downstairs. Okay. Okay. On um, page three, then check 100070 uh, uh, Gale Send Gauge Learning in the amount of $67,709.13. That is an online subscription renewal for electronic data. Uh, this and a number of other uh, payments on the register relate to 2023 and future years in order to receive the best price. Therefore, even though they're included in the December register, you'll see that they are coded to department 0000, uh, as Tracy mentioned earlier, as prepaid uh, expenses. And we'll pay the spenders now in January, but then using journal entries, we'll recognize the expense for accounting purposes in the periods in which um, they relate. H5, check 100119 to Midwest Tape. The amount of $157.99. That is uh, 2023 processing supplies. That's a box of clear CD cases for items in our collection. Uh, in general, processing, processing supplies refers to various items our collection services group requires in order to prep items for circulation, such as clear uh, plastic uh, to cover books, labels for cataloging, C CD and DVD cases, and containers for library things, uh, et cetera. And, and then the bigger picture is the 16,000 Midwest tape. Then. And that's for a variety of? That is for probably uh, ebooks and other uh, materials that we get. Okay. Thank you. Circulating materials. Okay. Then on page six, check 100025 and 100029 to Arlington Heights Memorial Library. Again, that's an AMX uh, charge and petty cash reimbursements. Uh, it's for supplies and refreshments for our monthly open mic meeting, which is an internal all staff meeting hosted by myself. Uh, the week of the board meeting where donuts and refreshments are served to the employees and they can hear uh, about updates and ask questions. Can, can I answer this one probably go to you? I got a question here. So this is where I'm getting confused with that total in the check amount. Because you know, like the top two on that line, you know, they're both Amazon credit, but you've got the check amount two different, two different totals. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about with the system limitation in the new system. It does this thing where it doesn't allow any more than like a 10 invoices or some some limit before it cuts another a new check. So because we have so many invoices being paid to Amazon, it cut like almost I think 90 checks to them this month. So they do have a check for $613.42. And they do also have a check for $524.67. Okay. So they are receiving multiple checks and then we're giving them like a spreadsheet so they can apply it correctly on the end. But in the next one and beyond. We're going to work with the consultants to see if we can tweak that system setting to give them one total grand total check. So that's okay. why you see it. Okay, okay. I was thinking that that was what you were saying before that that was the total going to that vendor, but it's a total just for the check that it is going to get. For the check that's going to that vendor. Ideally, each vendor would have one check. But yeah. Yeah. So the check total for that vendor. Gotcha. Okay. 
I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, page six, check one zero zero one two seven in Northbrook Public Library on the amount of nine hundred dollars. That is for three Magstack quad towers. These are like um, the, uh, almost like the paper book or paperback spinners that we have down in Kids World. We have four of them. Um, we were, we have budgeted to replace those in um, the project this year, in the Kids World project. Northbrook just happened to have some that were in light new condition for three hundred dollars each. Um, new, they're over three thousand dollars each. So we're able to purchase Man. three of the four there. Save us a little money on the. On the you got uh, piano tuning budget. was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a. Um, it, you a, have to watch those rails. We 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 picked up probably I would say close to a ten thousand dollar furniture desk because we're going to have a separate passport desk free of charge. Yeah. I sent my people and said, "Take a look at it. Can we do it? We're doing some modifications to it, but it's free. You just yeah, it's free, <laughs> <laughs> and it looks really good." So we're so very fortunate good to keep your eyes on the freebies and reels or the low cost items like this. Cool. Yeah, so I say just a fair amount of money for the budget. Uh, then on page eight, check one zero 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 two and one zero 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 three for all promotions for imprint. Um, one thousand seven hundred six dollars and eighty two cents and five sixty six dollars and ninety six cents. That's a thousand branded vendable book lights and a thousand branded tissue wallets uh, for various communications and marketing giveaways to occur throughout the year. Uh, tissue wallet? Um, excellent question. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a whole little pocket tissue <laughs> Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the little mini tissues, right? Yeah. Branded. It's branded. I got a book light for in my stocking for Christmas. And I have to say, I really like it. It's a very useful thing. So a branded book light from the Arlington Heights Memorial Library is nice. a great idea. Thank you. Okay, page nine, check 100027 to the Arlington Heights Memorial Library. Again, that's a express charge. Uh, there's two of them, $148 and $417.92. That is for gingerbread house kits for both staff and volunteers as part of the optional decorating contest hosted by our library's uh, Dutton Street Social Club. Uh, let's see, page 10, check. So one. imagine my thought when I said $13,000 worth of gingerbread. <laughs> what are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> so that probably, that, that's probably a bulk of your questions that you had, right? Okay. Well, over there. <laughs> T-shirt? We need to what the heck? Yeah, right. That's a good question. No, but, no, mine was a stupid question. <laughs> yours was just a comment. <laughs> um, so, like, I understand that, you know, check number 100027 um, is only $474 and the total is 13. If we dug into that 13,277, it's going to show where the rest of that came from, and there are eight different line items. Is mm -hmm. that making sure yeah. I understand this? Yeah. Because, like, I start having palpitations that I'm like, okay, Amazon, trust me, it's a hole you don't want to go down. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I just want to make sure that we're still accounting for all the little, you know, like where, where is that total coming from? Mm -hmm. So, it's similar to what we do for when Arlington's library is the vendor, when we're reimbursing, we include a schedule on the back. You know, we have that level of detail available for like Amazon or some sort of bigger vendors, absolutely. If you went through and added up every line that's got a single check number, you would come back to that right number. Got it. Okay. And I'm open to any formatting suggestions you have on a check register that would make it easier for you all to get comfortable. This is a good opportunity because the vendor is customizing these reports for us. So you can always ask for changes. You don't have to answer today, but if you have thoughts. Yeah, but I mean, I think Amazon is just a, especially because it's just a wormhole, right? Like you could, you know, is it, is it, uh, you know, book lights for giveaways? Is it tissue boxes? Is it, you know, bags? Is it toilet paper? Is it, you know, it's just such a big thing. Like a lot of the other ones are very specific to what they are being, what seems purchased. Mm -hmm. And that one's just such a, I'm like an expert, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Amazon recently didn't help switch to a pay by invoice 
This mm -hmm. time, yep. instead of a line of credit, now it's the all provided like, way. So a lot of those are free. Yeah. And they say, yes, yeah. I have a business account. So, like, yeah, mine is yeah. a PO number that I can enter. So, yeah. thank you. Um, and just to remind you um, also that you know we do have the AMX, all the AMX charges listed here with description. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to dig in any of that, please. Okay. Just I'll, I'll point something out to the group. So you saw the 13,277 for gingerbread houses, right? On the check them out. Mm -hmm. As you scroll through these pages, you'll see that same number pop up, like on page 12, mm -hmm. that Zoom subscription, all right? Same number, mm -hmm. but different amount. And it, it, it and it, it will repeat itself. So I think oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except we don't if you if there's a way that you could organize the the uh, the line item amounts uh that fall underneath the check amount, that would be really helpful. Unfortunately, because they're in different right budget departments, right. they're gonna be right. Right. Yeah. Right. departments. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, on um, page 10, check 100003 to Fort Imprint for $1,412.03. These are branded tote bags for giveaways, um, which is sponsored by the Friends of the Library. Page 13, check 100093 to Impact Networking in the amount of $10,248.84. Um, so the bulk of this payment relates to the replacement of two existing public use copiers. Uh, other charges included in this payment include smaller maintenance items for our copiers, such as replacement solar cartridges. So there you go. Contributing to. Go. Uh, <laughs> uh, then on page 14, check 10027 to the library. Uh, this one is a master card charge in the amount of $480.32. That is for commercial steel uh, recessed emergency lighting unit. So one of our emergency lights needed replacements. Replacement, so that was purchased via credit card. On page 15, check 100144, Standard Elevator Company, in the amount of $10,992.22. That was for elevator repairs for our Dutton um, entrance elevator. We had some issues. We had an uh, um, electrical event without the um, computer that controls the elevator there. And of course, everything's proprietary with that. Um, so that uh, was an emergency call to get that replaced. Check, or I'm sorry, page 18, check 100027. Again, uh, it's an American Express charge. Uh, it's to the Arlington Expo Memorial Library, $372.44. That is snacks provided to the hub for team studying in the library uh, during the week. So if you sorted them by check, you could do it, but then you don't have it by department. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Is it possible to give a, a electronic report that the board could sort? Probably? I would be happy. I believe so. I'll be happy. Okay. Yeah. On that note, it when on your end, if you hit the gray box, does it? Does it no. It's just a PDF. I am right now. I was just curious. Yeah. It's like First it was, yeah. 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 I kept trying to. <laughs> 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 Uh, then page 20, check 100027 and 100028. Again, to the other memorial library, express charges $382.50 and $71.10. These are training courses for Joey Duncan, who is our info services manager, basic public library administration, and quiet leadership foster your identity as an introvert, a quiet leader to inspire the On page 22, check 100013 to Amazon in the amount of $39.58. These are corner pockets for the CERT department book cards for use when sorting. So they just uh, have some pockets on their cards. Uh, then page 46, check 1000021 to American Door and Dock in the amount of $1,300. That is for a, um, the boiler room door at the Belmont building. That's the back door in the parking lot um, uh, at the bottom of that stairwell. It wasn't in the best of shape, so we budgeted last year to replace it. Um, so this is uh, that uh, that replacement. That is all I have on the check register. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah. <laughs>
was sitting there over there. <laughs> there was a four thousand two hundred ninety-two dollars and fifteen cents. Well, it would be. I would like to say that I contributed about thirty dollars towards the total. So I went to the maker place and uh, used the embroidery machine. Oh, cool! cool. And um, the staff uh, over there probably don't ever want to see my face again because I was there for a very long time. But I embroidered about twenty shirts oh, for my cool. staff. Yeah, so that is cool. neat. It was cool. I was able to take my logo and turn it into an embroidery thing. It was super sweet. That's cool. How was the experience? It was great. They're they're fabulous over there. I mean, they really are. Um, Kate uh, went above and beyond because uh, I may or may not have sewn the sleeve to one of the shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Was then stuck, which you guys own, and so she painstakingly <laughs> picked out all of the threads. I was like, just cut it. She's like, no, it's your shirt. So he's like, super. I'm like, really, just cut the shirt and take your own. She's like, no, 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 I'll fix it, I'll fix it. And then she delivered it. Oh, wow. I didn't even have to come back and get it. She's like, yeah, cool. Cool. No, it was great. Do we have a motion? Yes, we do. I'll move that we approve the accounts payable check register for the Arlington Heights Memorial Library, December 31st, 2022, in the amount of $1,700,819.73. Second. 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 Okay, any more comments, questions on that? Okay, roll call, please. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Brown? Aye. Yes. 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 Okay, let us move on to the executive director's reports. All right. <clears throat> so a few things I highlight in the director's report this month. On the first page, our drive-up window has been replaced. Uh, the drive-up was closed for three days in December, the 19th to the 21st, uh, while we installed a new window. The new window is equipped with a transfer drawer and intercom system, as well as the window. Um, so that increases protection from extreme temperatures for our staff and another layer of safety for that service. Can I, can I just ask a quick question? About yeah. that? Um, so I, I haven't been down there for a while. Um, so is it like adjustable if you're in a car versus like a higher vehicle? Or no, it's not adjustable. It's okay. set at the standard height for okay. a door. You know, so you like just kind of have to use figure it out. Yeah, okay. Right. And we also we have the sliding window still as well. So oh, okay. Okay. Uh, also on page one, uh, the library added two new research tools, Black Life in America and Hispanic Life in America, which focuses on the experience and impact of African and Hispanic Americans as reported by the news media. Each database includes millions of articles and primary sources from thousands of publications and cover, covers hundreds of years. Uh, on page two, uh, youth services staff shared new books with 6th, 7th, and 8th graders at Thomas Middle School before winter break. Over the course of three days, staff interacted with 800 middle schoolers, book talking new titles, highlighting library programs, and checking out books for students to enjoy over break. Um, I think, I want to say three, three, I which one, but I'm, I don't know exactly. Dana, do you know that one off the top of your head? No, no. It wouldn't be a bad idea for something like this, maybe uh, include. Their names too. Okay. Eight hundred. Do that type of report. Two different schools. Yeah. Right? yeah. Two dates. So four hundred at each school, right? No, no it just says Thomas. Eight hundred kids at Thomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Great. High school looks small. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, then on that same page, uh, <laughs> English as a second language. Um, and Literacy Office hosted 21 participants for two drop-in programs offered in partnership with Meals on Wheels. Participants spent time in the office socializing and making cards sent to uh, the Chicago Meals on Wheels office to be distributed to meal recipients across Chicago, the Chicago area. And on page four, after a late November opening, the library was bustling with love for arcade games and nostalgia all December long. We estimated we welcomed more than 2,700 visitors to the Arcade Age exhibit in November and another 6,984 visitors at the Arcade Age exhibit in December. 
Um, we did have a couple of programs that were also associated with it. On Tuesday, December 20th, programs and exhibit specialist Emily Musinski instructed a video game character cross-stitch workshop. 18 crafters embraced the 8-bit style while learning the ins and outs of cross-stitch. And then on Thursday, December 28th, programs and exhibit staff hosted an arcade cinema double feature event. 13 movie goers enjoyed popcorn and laid back screenings of genre classics, The Last Starfighter and Tron. So on page four. <laughs> yeah, you like that one? <laughs> that one's <laughs> Yeah, good. Okay. In case I haven't made that point clear. <laughs> Uh, then on that same page, uh, December marked the end of the semester for District 214, which meant students made their way to the library to study for final exams. 741 high school students used the library's conference rooms, large study tables, and made the hub their home base throughout the week before winter break. The hub provided snacks and school supplies, as well as a special visit from Gracie, the therapy dog, on December 18th and uh, 20th, where 52 teens gave Gracie Good pets while inadvertently helping themselves to stress. Then on page five, the December blood drive with community partner Versity resulted in a total of 25 scheduled donors, 24 registered donors, 16 whole blood, four double red cell donors for eight units, and a total of four first time Versity donors. The potential number of patients helped through the library and our internet communities efforts was 72. On page six, I wanted to include a few maker place um, statistics and uh, things to highlight what was happening there during the holidays. Uh, so from drumsticks to mugs, sheet music to ornaments, to laser cutters to maker place got quite a workout with over 187 circulations in December. Sublimation printing was also a huge draw in, with 188 sheets of sublimation printer sold and printed. 110 3D prints were submitted and printed by maker place staff in December as well. We um, included a breakdown of equipment reservations in December. Now, this is not all of the equipment usage. This is only uh, equipment that was reserved. And then uh, at the bottom of that page, December marked the first full year of culinary classes offered to the public. In total, we offered 74 classes and welcomed 1,057 attendees through a variety of classes, um, through the variety of classes designed for adults. Adult audiences 18 plus this year's schedule included classes designed for tweens, teens, parents, and even one instructed by an ESL volunteer as a complement to the One Book, One Village. Then we highlighted a couple of projects this month. One in particular that I wanted to, to point out was on page nine. This is one of our own staff members that uh, staff members that went over to the Maker Place and wanted to create um, gifts for her entire family and learned just about every piece of equipment over at the Makerspace. Uh, this is uh, Jennifer Nick. She's our inner library loan assistant. And uh, this was her first time using uh, equipment over at the Makerspace. And so she created all of this. Uh, she had ornaments, puzzles, T-shirts, mugs, water bottles, glasses, all done over at the uh, Makerspace. So it was just such a really cool project that she worked on. Um, the logo that she had printed on everything is for a uh, farm that her father recently purchased. And they found an old sign there with the name of the farm. So she turned that logo into something that everyone uh, in the family could enjoy. So I thought that was kind of a cool story. Cool. Wow. Okay, then on page 11, I wanted to just touch on the staff highlights. So we have a couple of NLIS graduates um, this month. <coughs> Ellie Richardson in New Services, uh, Programs and Outreach, uh, completed her master's degree in Library and Information Services Sciences, I'm sorry, from the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Ellie also moved from New Services Specialist to Librarian. And then our own information technology manager, Rich Dorian, who's joining us tonight, completed his master's degree in library and information sciences from Valdosta State University. So congratulations, Rich. Congratulations, Rich. Our SAS supervisor, Katie Myers, completed 29 hours of training credit to achieve a certificate in both end-of-life care and healthy aging. Complete, completion of this training provides the necessary credits for Katie's certified dementia practitioner renewal. And our community and circulation services manager, Shannon Meyer, and new services manager, Trixie Dantis, completed University of Wisconsin High School's training on trans inclusive librarianship. This training provided expanded knowledge to support the role libraries can take to affirm and support the safety and rights of transgender people through the creation and maintenance of a safe and welcoming space, collections, and programs. Okay, so that's everything I have for the director's report. You guys have any questions? 
wanted to say that I was really impressed actually by a couple of things you didn't even mention because there's so much, but the mock interviews for um, people with autism mm -hmm. and their families. I mean, I think that really speaks to our um, focus on diversity and accessibility and that just really jumped out at me. And also the vehicle stickers, again, I've seen it we're doing it again at the end of this month. And I've seen it promoted by actually Ann Gillespie and the library. And, you know, I think people like that because it's close to home and it makes it easier and they can make an appointment. So, you know, all of those things are really helpful for people that have accessibility needs, I think. Yeah, and we're seeing good numbers with that. So yeah. clearly the community uh, is using it. I think additionally with the vehicle stickers, it feels better to support our library than it does to go to like a currency exchange or something like that. Nothing against currency exchange or not, you know, just, you know, I, I don't know, I feel more like I'm supporting my community. Yeah. And then you can pick up a book or a kid or, you know, see what's going on. Plenty of things. A couple things. Yeah. So, so the numbers are just, you know, year over year or just growing substantially uh, in every area except circulation. And what is it about circulation that those numbers are down? Well, I think that circulation was kind of our, our hot point during COVID and coming right. out of COVID. And now we're seeing, you know, as we talked about previously, people are using the library in different ways, you know, they're coming in, okay. utilizing uh, the tables, the conference rooms, um, checking out the exhibit uh, more in person. Um, so it's a slight decline in um, circulation as compared to last year, uh, but I, I don't think that's a huge surprise given you know, that circulation was, was up a little bit last year due to COVID. Yeah, and then the second question is about personnel on the very last dashboard. Uh, I'm just curious as to how many vacancies you have. I'm sorry, which one are you looking at? The final, final dashboard. dashboard. Uh, so about the FTE compared to the to the actual job. Right. Uh, yes. So we have, I don't know how many, um, this is currently have it. We have about four jobs posted right now. Um, Tracy, do you know off the top of your head how many? Like you're just asking about some of the budget, we have 87. I'm just curious. Yeah. Right. And then, so 81 current employees. So six full time vacancies and then about 30. Yeah, and some of those have been just kept open that we've not right. rehired yet because you know we just have not ramped up everything as you know. As so you're keeping those positions open, okay? And I just wonder, um, from your perspective, to me, it, I I feel like circulation. Perhaps people have less time to read books and watch movies than you know during COVID. We all you know spent more time at home doing that kind of thing. But now that things are obviously more open, people are going out to dinner and going to plays and going to concerts. I, I'm just, you know, that's sort of anecdotal, but I'm wondering if that could be part of it. It could be. Um, I mean, clearly if you look at was, the program attendance, you know, the circulation has been declining for years. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. One time it really went double digits was during, 28, 2008, 9, 10, 11, during the recession. And then we were getting double digits. I'm sure we're getting this year too. And then things got better and went down. So, but speaking to your point, um, you know, if you look at the program's attendance, right. uh, you know, that is up as well. Mm -hmm. But it, it's not exactly following the same pace as just the visits. Right. So, you know, we've seen, I mean, if you come around here, uh, you know, during the day, see people are using the rooms. Uh, mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot more people milling around the space, uh, utilizing the, the tables and just, you know, being present mm -hmm. instead of just taking something out right. through drive through or right. you know? we're seeing that We're seeing that evolution of the library. Yeah. You know, it's, it's going from, the books will always be at its core, obviously, but it's changing to other things, the, the rooms, the maker space, you know, doing all those types of things. And I, I had heard this years ago, um, books are our brand, but they're not our business. Right. Right. That's a good way of putting it. Um, remind me, under circulation, I mean, downloadable, <laughs> I'm assuming that's like our Hoopla and things like that. 
what is other and what is ill? I, uh, ill is ILL, that's interlibrary yeah. loan. Oh, yeah. Um, other is things like library things uh, or, you know, things like that that, are, that don't fit into uh, any of those other okay. puzzles, puppets. Yeah. Good question. Um, in the makerspace, it's back to that. Do you know offhand um, how many people are coming in with their own um, base product or are using the makerplace materials to come in? I'd be able to give you a good yeah. percentage there. Would mm -hmm. you, just offhand. Yeah, parts. okay. I was just curious. It's not, you know, um, I'm we do have people bringing in. Yeah. And if it was more, you know, people are going This there. lady brought in these shirts. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and she had them embroidered. It looked like a day and a half. <laughs> brought her own shirts, though. Yeah, they're all. She um, brought her own shirts. And I can say after the two days of basically being there, because it took 12 minutes for each shirt. So, um, you know, that, that, and that's just the actual embroidery time. That's, that wasn't like setting up the hoop and putting it in there and not sewing the arm to it. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's always, you live and you learn, it's, you know. Um, but uh, it was kind of cool. They had, they, they moved the embroidery sheet upstairs. And so I kind of felt like a spokesperson because people would come in. There were a lot of people just curious and checking it out. Um, and like, oh, what are you doing? And like, that's really cool. And I did, you know, there were a couple of people that kept going into um, the 3D printer area and they were using, you know, different things there. Um, I saw somebody using the vinyl, um, like cutter and heat press. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was and it was it was really neat to just kind of like watch people come in and you could see those cogs starting to turn yes. of what they could do and um creative people yeah i mean and i would creative. say like the heat press gal she brought in her stuff and then used you know the rest of their materials obviously i brought in my shirts to be embroidered with and i learned a lot with that too um and i would do it differently next time which but you'd do it again. But I would do it again. I would, right. Yeah, I would totally do it again. Um, you know, and I want to know more, and I want to go back and do other things and play with it and all of these fabulous ideas. Question. Sure. Um, that with the um, the personnel, and so I can see that the new hires, and I, I think I mentioned that last meeting. Just if we have. Is there any, um, I guess, just concern, or is there any way we could see how many, like, we're losing, how many we're gaining? Like, if people, if somebody, you know, how many people are leaving? What's the turnover? Yeah, I mean, it's just voluntarily, yeah, just, um, just to get an idea, because again, you're keeping those 35 ish positions open on purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Intentionally. So, um, just to get an idea of, like, you know, this global picture. Okay. If there's any not, I mean, if you have a we see about, it every month. We do. Right? I mean, you do have new hires and separations here. We see it every month. We, yeah. So separations. Oh, yeah. I guess. Are you thinking for over time? Year, um, year over year. Yeah, a little bit more just to gain, I guess, and even. Um, yeah. well, just year, uh, just a cumulative during the year. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess no. You have the separations. Um, um, so we have yeah, I was just hires. thinking in what? general. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah, what, what what are you trying to to, to get at? Like, yeah. to just to get a picture of, and I can look back to different um, uh, directors' reports. Um, but honestly, it was the separations that I think I just missed. So yeah. um, you have that in there. But for the month, not for the, but it's not cumulative for the year. Yeah, right. I mean, in general, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't mind, but that I can. I mean, or even like, even maybe for a year or six months just to see, yes, over time, if there are certain months or just a, a trend, but I honestly, that was on me. I didn't see the separation. Um, okay, anything else from like for that? I do have a question regarding the 30 sound that you're you know, holding or whatever. Um, you know, I'm seeing in my world, in my business, things are, dare I say, getting back to pre-COVID normality. Um, and who knows if it's gonna keep 
trending that way or not. Um, and I certainly understand, you know, we all just kind of, you know, paused and froze and tried to pivot the best we could. But at what point do we say we don't either need these positions and so we're taking them off the books and not holding them? Or we're like, you know what, we really need to go ahead and, and bring people on so we can move forward. Um, because I feel like that's a lot of positions to just sort of be, you know, treading water or just hovering or whatever. Yeah, not all of those were being held. Um, okay. a, a good portion of them. Um, which last year, going into this budget year, we took, it's, it's mostly material handling positions and some sort of positions um, to be split. We did not carry over half of them into 2020. So as uh, if you remember when we were doing the budget, we reduced our FTE by a pretty substantial number. That was from that. Okay. Um, so we carried some over that we wanted to hold on to to see if they would be used in 2023. And if not, then we'll reevaluate that at the end of the year as we're going into the next budget. Yeah, I, I fully you know think it's a good idea to plan for it, but you know at some point it just makes the books look funny. You know, right, it's coming out of COVID. We don't know. We didn't know what to expect this yeah. year, so we kind of want to hold on to those and see see okay. what happens. Can I just clarify when you say you're holding on to them, like basically they're just on pause. They're on pause. Okay. Yeah, so they're open positions that we're not hiring for. Yet. But we are hiring for other positions. There's, uh, I think, four or five positions currently posted. Um, we have a couple others that managers are working with HR uh, to post. But it's really those material handling positions are the ones that we, we just had. Um, okay. Uh, so I would like next to introduce Rich Dorian. He is our information technology <laughs> manager to give us an overview of. IT, the IT department um, at the library, some of the projects that we're working on, and uh, general info. Give me one minute, Rich, to uh, bring this up. And Stay in front of us. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, good to see everyone here. For those of you I haven't met, uh, I haven't met yet. I'm Rich Morgan, my team manager here. I've been here for uh, almost, uh, well, just over 13 years now. It's just a 13 year mark, and I've been uh, IT manager now since my sixth year. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of do a quick high level overview of some of the projects that we're working on this year, and then just some of the things that we do as a department, uh, just on a day to day basis, and uh, some of the you know different things that we support uh, in terms of the staff. Sure. Um, the things we're going to go over will be uh, transition to our new SharePoint site, uh, computer refresh for all of the staff and public computers. Uh, we're replacing the door access system for the building. And as Mike mentioned earlier, we have the Hendrickson Room AV system that the friends uh, approved for us to be replaced. And Rev Enhancements, that's our room and event management system that uh, is part integrated into our website for booking rooms and uh, doing program registrations. And then the IT staff recap, that's just going to be a brief overview on different members of the department. And what they all, do. all right, so the SharePoint site, the uh, big, big uh, impetus behind this was to improve department communication. Uh, we have you know, a lot of staff that are moving from on-site to you know, hybrid, remote and on-site and just being able to share files and, and be able to post notices that are applicable to staff from all over the library in a, in a central repository that's you know easy to get to from anywhere uh, without the use you know sometimes of uh, VPN or using remote desktop or any other uh, technology that staff may find difficulty with. Um, we are currently supporting, I want to say, 65 plus, I'm guessing just on the rough numbers that we've been working on for the VPN setup, about 65 remote staff that are not full time, of course, but you know, maybe working one day, possibly two days a week, you know, remotely. And so that's all going to be part of this project is to, you know, just to get more on the same page and be able to have a you know, continuity with all their documents and, and data responsibilities. 
Uh, next up is our computer refresh. Uh, this is something that we typically do about every uh, five to seven years. So we're actually past the seven year mark this time. We've really uh, stretched out the hard work. I think we're at about seven and a half years since we last purchased. Uh, so we're going to be replacing uh, I think about 120 staff computers and then I think 40, 45 public computers. That's for the entire public computer lab, public catalog stations throughout the library. Uh, just any other uh, public area it could be the um, in the conference room, big conference room, the uh, projector or stuff like that. Um, and then the public training center. Uh, that's the downstairs with the you know, they do all the public training classes. So those are going to get updates as well. Uh, so that's going to be one of the biggest projects for this year. Uh, that, that we usually roll that out parts first. We'll do all the staff, then we'll do all the public. Uh, the door access system. So this is something that's been uh, a long time done. I think the last time this was replaced with the one in 1995. It's a long time. It's uh, it's hanging on by a thread, and uh, yeah. <laughs> and then when it goes down, yeah, sometimes we just can't get in place. Uh, so it's <laughs> something that we've been uh, needing to replace, and just hasn't happened yet. So that's that's a big one that we're going to do this year. And this is going to be really cool because we'll be able to grant like temporary access to our contractors. You can just send them a link; they can open it on their phone. On their phone, goes into the building on your phone instead of having to you know, pass around the, the hanging tags and them forgetting them or uh, you know, walking off the job site with them, and then they have access to the building. So then, with the, with the phone, one you can just turn it on and off from you know from a central location uh, whenever they're done with the job. Uh, the Hendrickson room may be. Uh, this has not been replaced since 2008. Uh, that's when the friends actually last funded this for us. Uh, so this is obviously one our biggest and most heavily utilized room for all of our large public events. Uh, so we're going to be getting all brand new audio equipment, all new projectors, uh, all new sound equipment, and we're just going to make sure that we uh, fix any issues that we might have in terms of uh, the different room conditions. Sometimes we're in the you know the north, the south, the full room. Making sure that it works with all the configurations of like the, the hearing loop system or being able to use the you know the overhead sound system or the lighting or you know any different configurations. Sometimes it's it works in you know it's an 80 or 85 percent, but sometimes there can be issues just because of the you know the programming of when this was made so long ago and some of the additions that we've made since then to the room. Uh, so Grateful to the friends to, uh, that we just heard that they're going to be supporting that and the other uh, items that Mike mentioned we might be going back to them for after we got to bid is the uh, addition of streaming services. So when we do live streaming of our programs, that will be integrated directly into the room so that we don't have to get meeting owl or some other sort of you know setup that we do internally. It'll just be part of the room and they can just turn it on if they want to hear for staff or outside customers if they want to stream something to. YouTube or Zoom or whatever their medium may be. Uh, rev enhancements, as I mentioned, this is our room and event booking system. Uh, so the lottery with guests, that's a big one. So for the for the maker space programs for the culinary classes, we do have a lottery now because we have a lot of people who didn't have a chance to attend uh, just because of how the registration process went. And so we implemented the lottery and we had a lot more people, a lot more first time attendees, and everything was great. But the big ask was that, yeah, I got in, but my husband didn't, or my boyfriend or girlfriend didn't do. So that's going to be the next thing that we're going to roll out uh, soon so that people can register as a, as a pair and be able to get into a class together, such as, you know, knife sharpening skills or some sort of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the husband and wife. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, let's see if this works. <laughs> You know, uh, chef Grace, you know, <laughs> um, and then we also are going to, or we actually just rolled out the uh, customer's uh, ability to book the Hendrickson room. They used to have to manually fill out a form, pick two dates that they thought would be good for the program, then they'd submit that to our uh, to our staff, who would then check the dates, get back to them, say yay or nay, and then it would be a whole process if they had to go reselect dates. So now they can just go online. They can actually pick the dates and they know right then and there if it's available. And then it just gets automatically emailed to our staff and, and they know it's in the system and it is going to work right to the program as well. Um, and the other thing that I didn't include here was that we just opened up or 
Uh, so a few months back, we opened up the ability for uh, customers to book individual element or equipment at the maker place. So they can book like a laser cutter or embroidery machine. Uh, <laughs> uh, not the less or something. <laughs> Or they can look at for an hour at a time, and then if, if no one wants to use it after that, you know, if they're still working on their project, they can continue to use it. But they can at least, you know, add one lines for something more popular. Um, and this is just a quick recap of uh, what kind of goes on in IT. So our help desk, <coughs> on average, gets about forty-seven calls a day. We get about twenty-three help desk tickets per day, and those are just. Kind of the metrics in terms of all the people that are calling IT for support on something. This could be something as simple as a paper request. It could be replacing a toner. It could be help with resetting a password. Um, so we like to keep track of these just to you know kind of put some numbers and, and time to the uh, amount of requests that we get internally. Uh, we do have IT staff available all hours of the day when we have staff in the building. So usually we have Monday through Friday. We our first staff member gets here around 6, 6.30, and we have staff all the way to close uh, every day. Do, do board members ever call in and ask for help? <laughs> yes, they do. they do. Many times. I usually take all this calls myself. <laughs> you already have. Uh, and then our web team, uh, they actually support our website, uh, both, you know, both from here and remotely. If there's any sort of uh, issues, you know, emergencies, they're always on call. Uh, they been there in, in so many situations where you know we'll have a program that's happening and some sort of change of plans and you know we need them to jump in and, and help out and fix something and, and they're always there for us and they're always coming up with you know innovative uh, new products and, and in ways that we can you know help customers interact with the library. So we have three yeah three full time people on the web team, two are programmers and one's the kind of front end uh, content expert for everything that you can see on the website. Uh, he works uh, a lot with the communication department. That is uh, the brief recap that I have for today. If anyone has any questions, uh, happy to uh, have yeah. you yeah, I have a question about the uh, computer refresh. Sure. Um, so is that like you replaced all the computers at once or does it kind of on a rolling basis? Um, so all, yes, all the computers at once in the year, but we usually do it you know, department by department. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we don't try and do them all like in a week. Uh, usually the staff will probably take about Maybe two or three months, and then the public might be another month or two. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll, we're hoping to have it kind of wrapped up by the August September time frame, and just stretch it throughout that throughout that area. Yeah. And then, can I ask, like, why you decide to do like everything in <laughs> one year? Why you don't say like, okay, this year we're going to do the staff, next year we're going to do the catalog? Um, well, the the computers, it's it's nice. We we tend to do those in line with uh, the updates to the operating systems. So this year, it's going to be updated Windows 11. Uh, we like to get the staff kind of familiar with the same software and we'll roll in any sort of training and just to get them acclimated with any sort of changes that may be happening that year. Uh, so we'll, we'll pair the you know, computer a lot, refresh early. Um, but in terms of, you know, all the other projects, it just kind of, like the Hendrix and Room 1, we were hoping to get it done last year. It was just kind of funny things that we will practice the system. Uh, so, you know, certain things, you know, kind of been budgetary, but this is just going to be a year as a year. Last year was a year of planning. This is a year of year. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, like I noticed that the Village of Arlington Heights was having problems with their website today and they have a meeting tonight. So, that's something that you, your department, if you know, would help with this meeting. I, I'm just curious what kind of what are your typical calls? Like, I, I can't remember my password or like your customer calls. So we don't actually field many customer calls. Okay. Like from, from or those customer. tickets that. Those are all, almost all the tickets that are, we get are usually staff tickets. I sure. see what you, okay. But gotcha. then they could be related to the public, you know, for example, gotcha. a customer could be out in the public computer lab trying to print to the copier and just that. not working. So, you know, we may get that call and maybe it's an issue with the print server or something. Okay. So, you know, then we would field that question and help them out. Uh, but we're not usually the first line of defense to field the calls from the public, but you know, we support all of the equipment internally okay. that does. Yeah. Got it. I was confused by tickets. You no. meant internal tickets. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. All right, good. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much.
Okay. We are on to old business, uh, item four, data and statistics reporting. Okay, so just wanted to you know bring to everyone's attention the new dashboard that you're seeing this month. Um, you saw it at the community hall meeting. Um, we implemented it this month with a couple of the changes that came out of uh, the discussion at the community hall meeting. I uh, wanted to just put this on the agenda so you had an opportunity to provide me feedback or um, you know request other changes. Um, as mentioned in the memo, we are working on a maker place dashboard, which was also requested in that community hall meeting. And we'll be bringing that to uh, the February community hall meeting for further discussion. It's good. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Thank you. I'd like, I'd like to jam in some of the, you know, like the 2022 data, 21 data, you know, what that, because I remember we talked about like the cards and things like that. Mm -hmm. okay. Very good. Anything else? All right. Mm -hmm. um, there is no new business. Surprising. Uh, so we're going to go into others. So discussion items for the Arlington Heights Village Board Joint Breakfast Meeting on Saturday, February 4th at 8.30. Do you know what that's, what is that? It's going to be at the Village Hall. Village Hall? Yeah. yeah. Village Hall. It's going to be Village Hall. I believe it's going to be. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Is that where it was? Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's downstairs. The trip is downstairs, right? Oh, it's upstairs. It's upstairs. I think it's uh, second floor. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything specific that we that, that we want to talk to? You know, a lot of times these meetings are, you know, what what, what happens is the mic will present and you will present, you know, what's going on, you know, with, with, with both areas. Is there anything specific that we want to talk about? Partnerships, you know, how we're working with them. I mean, obviously, we've talked about the Baker Place in the past and how that together. And you don't have to come up with anything right now, by the way. But just kind of you know think about if there's something specific that you think that we that, that we need to discuss with them. Actually, just a question. I'm not sure. Does do the staff at the village? I guess they're resident. I'm thinking of like any of the. Um, they had. Do they have access to the library? Like we're still working with D25 teachers. Like, do the donors are live in Arlington Heights? Do you staff there? even in just different departments. I'm thinking of social service departments, but does anyone, do they have? We don't currently have an intergovernmental agreement with the village. So it's just if, if they live in Arlington. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what, what are you going to brag about? Well, I, I was thinking um, this year how we did instead of, used to be like Irish Fest at um, the Historic Society. And this year the village did a whole um, multi, fest. yeah, heritage fest. I, I thought that would be something that we could highlight. It seems to me that that's part of Arlington Heights, what's happening now. And even, you know, when we've been a part of, um, Arlington El Fresco, when they have their special events, we always have a table or, you know, giveaways or things to do. I mean, I think, and as, I mean, as the discussions for what's going to happen to Arlington Park come, clearly they're going to share those with bodies like us. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure Randy will probably talk about that. And he'll give yeah. you guys a summary of the number of projects that mm -hmm. we're doing on in the range and stuff like that. And then I'll talk about some of the stuff we're, we've been doing to update the village trustees. Um, so, yeah. It is a public meeting. So, to attend. Okay, anything else? Yeah, if you come up with anything, obviously get to, to put the mic in myself. And yeah, there we go. All right, um, can we have a motion to go? Oh, I'm sorry, is there any other that anybody else wanted to bring up? We good? Okay. Uh, can we have a motion to go into closed session, please? My motion that we go into closed session for, uh, sorry, thank you. Um, for the purpose of discussing executive director's performance goals and reviewing closed session minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Close the day. That passes. We are going to closed session. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.
Good. And we are back in open session for the Arlington Heights Memorial Library Board of Trustees, Tuesday, January 7th, 2023. Uh, board members, please go do roll call real quick. John Sufflet. Amy Samari. Andy Roll. Carol Metal. Sarah Dallas. Jennifer Burrell. Greg Zick. Okay, we have two motions that we're going to need here. One is we reviewed the closed session minutes from December 15th, 2020. Uh, January 11th, 2021, January 19th, 2021, February 16th, 2021, and Committee of the Whole for July 12th, 2021, and a motion to release the written minutes and to destroy the audio tapes. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Okay, that motion passes. Uh, then secondly, to uh, approve the closed session minutes. I approve the closed session minutes for that period of time. I, I move that we approve the closed session. Second. I'll second. Second. Okay. Tonight. Oh, tonight. Yeah. For tonight. For tonight. Yeah. Any comments or questions on that? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Sorry. Opposed nay. And that one passes. Um, okay. Now we just need a motion to adjourn. No move. <laughs> second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, you want to do that. Yeah, let's return these. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>